thank you very much once again for having me on the show. Uh, my name is Karimi Purity. Uh, like you have said, a servant of God. Um, my background, that's where now airport feels like home. I've worked in uh, Frankfurt Airport in Germany as a ground hostess and uh, in travel agencies. So my, I have a background, my career in tourism, that is before I started the ministry. Um, and I love everything to do with tourism, with the, with the travel, with the aeroplanes, and just the atmosphere of the airport. This is why I say airport feels like home, because I really loved working there. It's a place where you meet lots of people, especially Frankfurt Airport is one of the biggest airports uh, in the world. And sometimes I was even working late in the night. I would start work sometimes at uh, 1.30 mm -hmm. uh, a.m., but I was uh, happy because uh, it's something that I love doing. So this is why I say airport feels like home for me. Yeah. Um, your experience, given your background in the tourism industry, how do you think um, your international experiences have actually contributed to your passion in mentoring the young people? Yeah, that's a good question because I, I really wanted to touch about exposure mm -hmm. because I wanted to encourage even the, everyone, especially the young people, uh, to travel whenever they have a chance to travel because it exposes you. There is a way it builds your mind, it, it expands your mind, and you are able even to have a different mentality. So for me, being out there, having the chance, the opportunity to be out there because I've been there for many years, I've learned many things that are really helping me even now and the things, the things that are still are also helping me help other people. So there are a lot of things that I've learned and uh, I believe also that exposure and what I've learned there and then even um, the ministry now because now uh, I'm a servant of God. I believe all that is a full package that helps me now to reach out to the people I reach out to. So what fuels your passion for the youth? Uh, I think, um, you know, I have a calling. As a servant of God, you, mm -hmm. you get a calling and you get your mandate from God. So I, ha I have three assignments uh, in the ministry. First is to teach the word of God. Uh, second is to raise the standard that is of people in the community. And this is where now I major with the youth and the elderly. And, and the land is, a, is a, okay, the land, I'm not going to speak about it now because we are measuring on the youth and how we can help them. So uh, I believe that um, the youth, like we were saying about the exposure, when they have the exposure, you know, when you've not traveled, uh, let's say even within the country, your mind is like limited. So, yeah. but when you get to get out there, there is a way your mind sees far. Yeah. yeah. So, so this is something that uh, I wanted to encourage, uh, especially our young people, to venture into. You, you have a rich bio. You, you have a rich bio. So from being a ground hostess to businesswoman to being an author, where we are coming to, actually, uh, the books you've written, to um, taking care of the elderly. What motivated you to switch gears from um, being a ground hostess to taking care of the elderly? Uh, it's my calling because I worked at Frankfurt Airport and then came my calling after that. So uh, I started seeking God more deeply. Okay, I was always a Christian, but uh, mm -hmm. that was like I was doing it part time. So when I got serious with, with, uh, with what God wanted me to do, uh, that's when now uh, even my real purpose was, was revealed to me. And this is where I came to learn even about purpose. As much as I loved the airport uh, and the tourism, I was doing it, but I, I was not understanding what exactly is my purpose. So what motivated me to do what even I do now is when I came to know about my purpose. And I realized it's very powerful when a human being recognizes their purpose, because that's when you start living. Because before then, yes, yeah. I was happy, but, mm -hmm. but when you recognize your purpose and actually start to live it, you feel alive. Yeah. So you, you've touched on something that is quite, quite, I don't know if I should call it quite sensitive or rather, um, it's a deal breaker 
for this 21st century young people? When do they realize what's their purpose? Because there's so many young people out here who have a lot of cri identity crisis. Hey, maybe I am in the media, maybe hey, is media my purpose? Ama nilingia media kwa sababu watu waliniambia you look nice for the camera, you know? So when do we start identifying purpose as a young person? Yeah, you know, that's actually very important because uh, we should start it as early as possible, actually when the children are young. And if there is also parents or parents-to-be that are listening to me, this is something I'm also passionate about because I'm a mother. I'm a mother of a son. And, uh, you know, out there in Europe, or, and I believe also in America, in the USA, children, there is a way they are nurtured that you, re you realize and recognize your talent when you're very young. So from the kindergarten, there is a way that is brought out from you because you know your talent is something you're born with it's not something that you acquire uh, as you yeah. go on living mm -hmm. so it's there in you so you can pull it out uh, especially the parents because they are the number one teachers to the children mm -hmm. so it's something that you can pull it out as early as possible yeah tell us about the books you've written yeah thank you i've written uh three books i have two with me uh, I don't know whether I can show it to the camera. Yeah, yeah. yeah the first one is Seek Ye First, the Kingdom of God. And the second one is uh, Biblical Fasting. And the third one, which is not here, is uh, Provision for Your Purpose. So all the books are in Amazon. That is an online market. Uh, I realize that it's not widely known in Kenya, mm -hmm. but out there is, is a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. So uh, I've written these books uh, from my own experience, my own journey with God and the things that he has taught me through that. Because when I speak about ministry and the, mm -hmm. spiritual, uh, the spiritual life, uh, there is a way the Lord has taught me that this is not limited to the spiritual. It should start from the spiritual, but it, sh it should branch out to the marketplaces and everywhere else. So um, I know that the show is not only for the Christians, but uh, I just want to mention that uh, as we should not be limited in the church. We should be out there doing things, doing great exploits, because we have all that we need. Once we know our purpose, we can be out there in the marketplaces, anywhere that, we, that the Lord uh, put us, we can be there and shine and even help the nations. Personally, yeah. I'm born again. Wow, that's now, good. <laughs> there's this part where we don't know how to differentiate between when now you're talking to me as a pastor and now you're talking to me as um as as a i don't want to call you a motivational speaker but as a mentor how do you draw the lines between now i am speaking to you as a servant of god i am in the i am in my office I know you understand that. Yeah. So I am speaking to you from my office as a servant of God. And now I am speaking to you as a mentor. How are you able to bring that balance? Uh, I think it's about wisdom because when you, get, when you start working with God, if you're serious in what you're doing because you're, uh, the wisdom of God comes from the word of God. So there is a way the Lord equips you, even with the discernment to know how to handle every person, the great, uh, the rich, uh, mm. the, the humble, uh, the young, the old. You have that wisdom from your work with God, understanding the word of God. Um, so, uh, for example, the word of God tells us, Paul said that I'm able to, wh wherever I go, I am able to sit and, 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 and deal with any person. Mm. Because, you know, you know when to come down, you know when to go uh, mm. up. So I think it's about wisdom. Is about being diligent mm -hmm. in what we do because mm -hmm. if we say that, uh, uh, for example, I'm a servant of God, I have to stand and prove myself worthy. Mm -hmm. I have to be diligent. Acceptable of the call. Yeah. Yes, so that I know how to handle, especially our young people, the young generation, we need a lot of wisdom to handle them. Yeah. Ooh. So what are some of the maybe, um, what, what's the main challenge you faced in, in mentoring the youth? Uh, the main challenge is, uh, <laughs> wow, you know, we are talking about a very important mm -hmm. thing so, uh, within a very mm -hmm. short time. So it's just by the <laughs> grace of God that we'll be able to package this. Yeah. So the, the, the challenge that I face, because, you know, I like to, I like to help the, the young people realize their purpose because I know how important it is. The first challenge is that most of them, without knowing, unknowingly, they are, they are egoistic, they are, they are selfish, they are mm -hmm. self-centered. 
this is not, I, I will not blame them because mm -hmm. it's it, uh, the, the kind of world we are living in now, mm -hmm. it's, uh, many things are different. Okay. Even even the way people are brought up now, it's not the way that they used to be brought up before. Yeah. And now things are busy. You find even the parents are busy. Uh, they're not sitting one-on-one -on -one with the children uh, uh, as required, you know. So you find that these young people, they have that kind of um, mentality, entitlement, selfishness. Mm -hmm. So you need wisdom to be able to bring this to them that it's not supposed to be like that. Mm -hmm. So this is one challenge I face, but uh, like we said, when you have wisdom on how to go about it, because you have to make this person comfortable, uh, uh, when you tell them this kind of stuff, they have first to feel comfortable. Yeah. So that's a challenge that I face. Amazing. Let's shift gears to business. In your opinion, how can businesses and individuals raise the standard of the need in the society? In my opinion is first we have to, to recognize that we are not living in this one forever. Mm -hmm. Everything that we have, uh, we cannot take it with us. Of course, we all know that. Mm -hmm. So once we have this revelation and we understand that, we will be able to share from what we have. And we will be able to realize that when you have a business and, and uh, you, you prosper in that business, uh, you sh we should be able to realize that when we share, we are making even ourselves better. Yeah? Because, uh, because if, if where, where I live, if there are poor people, there is a way I'm also being affected by that. And also there is a joy that comes from getting what you also have uh, uh, earning from the business and instead of consuming it all alone, there is a joy when you share it with others. So I think when we have that kind of mentality of love and, and also sharing with the community and knowing that even the poor person is part of me, is part of, uh, it's without looking at them like, uh, like whether they are poor, that's not my business. But when we, are, when we realize that, as long as they are poor, as long as, as they're in that condition, they are affecting us in one way or the other, I think we'll be motivated to raise their yeah. standards. True. Share with us um, from your experiences in Germany and Kenya regarding um, positive impacts for the development of the society in different cultural contexts. Uh, sorry, uh, pardon? Please. Share with us yeah. insights from... Mm. You're working here in Kenya and you're working um, abroad in Germany. From your few insights here and there, how can we make a positive impact in the society um, in different cultural contexts? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that I got that yeah. right. Yeah, I think um, anyone that has been out there, uh, you, it's a different uh, kind of world in terms of development in terms of uh, the way people help each other, even the government mm -hmm. help each other to raise the standard of everyone else in the community. Uh, for example, if you go to, to uh, let me speak about German because that's where I've, I've mm -hmm. lived, uh, you will find that even in the uh, house or apartment of, of someone who is not well up, you will find uh, w things like washing machine, uh, this kind that makes life easier. So there is a way that life is, is made a bit standard for everyone else. Of course, they are the rich and they are the poor, but there is a way life is, is balanced because, uh, because they believe also in pulling those who are down, pulling them up. Mm -hmm. So I think we can, we can borrow that also in Africa and instead of just uh, uh, doing the development uh, or thinking about oneself or, or, or a community, your own community. I think we can develop, uh, we can do the development thinking about the whole nation for the betterment of the whole nation. Yeah. Amazing. So how did your early experiences fuel your passion? Because of course you had the first place, I think if I got it right, uh, you started from Frankfurt. Uh, yeah. from ground hostessing so that uh, before doing all these other things. So how did those first experiences in your career uh, fuel your desire to impact in the society? Uh, let me say even before the ministry, I was uh, doing some charity work, just not in the lunch scale, uh, not the way I'm doing it now. Of course, I want to do it even more and even better. Um, but I still had that. Uh, I, I still 
hand that charity. Uh, I used to help where I could. Mm. And when I talk about helping, it's not only uh, limited to finances because we can help in many ways. Um, so I think those experiences and even uh, working at the, at the airport, because I believe, you know, uh, the Lord has the, the, our destiny where he wants to take us through. Uh, and I believe that the journey that he allows us to go through, sometimes we may think, we may look back and think that was a diversion, but in actual sense, uh, the Lord takes us through that journey. Because uh, in a place like the airport, I learned about how to love people even more, how to be patient with people, how to, to have self-discipline. Because like I said, I used to work even to start my, my shift at uh, one, 1.30 in, early in the morning. So you, there are things that I learned there, of course, that, uh, that I'm still utilizing in my life today that are helping me today. Amazing. Yeah. As we wind up this conversation, I yeah. know time, time is doing us that thing. But as we wind up this conversation, in your experience with dealing with old people, uh, the elderly, the young people doing ministry, what can you paint for us as a picture of where we, ha we are headed to as a country? Wow. Oh. As, uh, I think um, as a country, of course, we cannot forget that we, have done, we are doing uh, great things. Mm -hmm. But that will not, will not make us also have a blind eye on where we should pull up on our socks, especially when it comes to the elderly and the young people. The young people, I think they need a lot of help. We need to understand the kind of help the young people need. There is, there is I've noticed that even mental illnesses, it's an issue that many do not understand. And uh, some people are, are even sick the mental uh, illnesses, and they're not even aware that this is what I'm dealing with. Some have anger problem, some have impatience, but they just think I'm just a bad person. But it's a mental illness. There is a root somewhere that, that, that is mm. causing them to act the way they are acting. So I think there is a kind of, and I'm, I'm sorry to say that, but I think it's a kind of pandemic when it comes to mental illnesses and when it comes to our youth because they, we really need to help them realize who they are. I have noticed that the young, many young people in Kenya are intelligent. They are brilliant. But they just need to be, to be positioned rightly in terms of emotional health, mental health, uh, because you see it's like the society focus on the intelligence. Mm. So we, you find we have very intelligent people in Kenya. This is widely known even in the USA, even in the Europe, we have very good workers in the high places out there. So intelligence, Kenyans are very intelligent, but we are neglecting the mental and the emotional health. You see? Because I sit down with these young people and at the end of the day you realize this is a person who is even willing to change. And I want also to touch something for the young people and everyone actually, uh, a, teaching, a teachable mentality a teachable spirit is very important because you see when we have a teachable spirit we can go very far yeah. so when our young people are taught that uh, you cannot go far with the selfishness uh, entitlement don't expect that your parents your boss or your your pastors don't think you're entitled to this thing see it as a privilege and then there is a way to approach it because i have realized our young people uh, they approach things wrongly and I, I, I advise them and I'm happy even to be here for whoever is listening to tell them that you can go far if you have the right character. And, and the other thing I wanted to say is character is a vehicle that will carry you to wherever, to your destiny. Yeah, it's because you find many of them, some have been in universities, some have worked in great institutions, but then they come back to zero. Why? Because the character. character the character. And when I give a Bible, a Bible example, I give with Samson. He was great. He had something mighty, but the character was wanting. So it brought him down. On the other side, we have Joseph. Yeah. He was also a young man, but his character, he had worked on his character. Mm -hmm. So he was able to get to his destiny. So mm -hmm. I'm telling our young people, work on the character, work on intelligence, mm -hmm. excellence, because you see, we work, but we don't look at the excellency. Am I doing what I'm doing at my, uh, at my best? You see, if you are to work somewhere as a young person, even without the boss, are you doing what you're supposed to do mm. or you need somebody to oversee? Police you. So, yeah. <laughs> so integrity, excellence, yeah. we need to, to check that. Okay.
unfortunately we have to bring this discussion to a close but thank you so much for sharing okay. with us for talking to us Ooh, yeah Welcome. today i'm leaving the studio <laughs> packed you know wow. yeah that was purity karimi she is a woman who wears a whole lot of hats but my take home this week's uh, episode of strength of a woman character intelligence and integrity is all that will propel you to greater heights out there don't touch that dial val is coming back with the food conversation you can't afford to miss that one